The term regulator is used in this video in two different senses. The first kind of regulator is a device that allows for setting a fixed gas pressure. The second kind of regulator is a person who works for the government charged with protecting the environment. We hope it is clear from context which meaning is intended. Hey everybody, it's Bill Houston with the Bill Houston Podcast. This is the Merrimack Valley tube trailer theory video. Um, I'm going to be reading from a report which you can get online. And it's called The Black Swan at Merrimack Valley. And you can get a copy by going to tinyurl.com slash black swan Merrimack Valley intro. That's tinyurl.com slash black swan Merrimack Valley intro. So now we're to the point where we have explored the tube trailer theory. Now let's see if we can figure out which operator might be involved. And there are two primary operators doing this line of business, NG Advantage and XNG. The next question is, was NG Advantage involved? There was a Twitter exchange here. I'm, I won't read it, but I'll let you read it. It's in the report where uh, basically NG Advantage had this seemingly big emotional response where they just vigorously denied it, uh, which was, I thought was noteworthy. Uh, and then was XNG involved? And I believe that there's a more compelling case for XNG uh, being involved. Now, the one thing I didn't uh, tell you before, which well, let's go look at Google Earth for one moment. So these are all of the impacted sites. So this is the enclosing. This is the smallest enclosing uh, circle, which will capture all of or which will enclose all of the affected sites, according to the NTSB. Now, let me zoom in on something here. I want to show you. So here's basically the center right here. Right near the center. See this building with the blue roof? It's not really blue. I added that. This is... This is 300 Brickstone Square in Andover. This building is 300 Brickstone Square in Andover. And on the 10th floor is the home office of Express Natural Gas. One of their home offices. They have one in Boston. There it is, 300 Brickstone Square in Andover. And now let me back it out and show you. They had fires happening in all directions around them. That must have been a spectacular thing to see. XNG was watching these fires all around them. So the first thing is physical proximity. They are super close. They're right basically essentially in the center of the whole thing. So that makes them, let's turn on uh, XNG. That makes them very suspicious, I think. And by the way, here is Columbia Gas has a big facility here, including offices. It was a couple of miles away. If we do put a, a ruler down, let's measure it from here. So basically a little over two miles about two miles, 2.2 .2 miles, two and a quarter. So these guys probably had lunch together. Um, it's close enough to um, make you wonder. So the first thing is the physical proximity. Now, one question that we have that we might have is, if XNG truly was involved, then why wouldn't Columbia Gas be pointing the finger to them and saying it wasn't us it was them they're the ones that did it 
And the reason is, I believe, it's basically because XNG lacks operating authority in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Uh, this was a decision made by the local manager, which is Steve Bryant, pre president of Columbia Gas. This is a theory. I'm not suggesting this is the truth. I'm suggesting this is one possible theory which would make the whole thing make sense. So it was a handshake deal between Steve Bryant, president of Columbia Gas of Massachusetts, and Seth Berry and or Matt Smith, which are two uh, executives with Express Natural Gas. Now, you might think that this is pretty shady, but as you can as you will see coming up, XNG has a pretty shady uh, background. So I'm just saying that I've seen some real shady operators. I mean, the oil and gas industry is an industry of rogues, yet XNG is distinguished among an industry of rogues in terms of the level of their contempt for the law the truth, public safety, contempt for their drivers, and even contempt for their contractors. Matt Smith wrote in an email to Art Klinger that trucks can't explode physically impossible. I, I think it's important for everyone who's got fire concerns to understand that what's inside the tanks are, for all intents and purposes, uh, without oxygen. It takes oxygen to combust. And so the tanks cannot get a spark inside them. They cannot physically explode. Now, I don't want to call Matt Smith a liar, but he definitely should know better. And this is definitely a false statement. Type 4 CNG fuel tanks explode all the time. Here are just a few examples that I've been able to uncover. There was the April 3rd, 2014 explosion in Howard, Wisconsin of a CNG-powered uh, box truck um, where an unsecured forklift rolled forward and pierced uh, one of the tanks, and it exploded and killed the driver. A passenger was also critically injured. This damage was solely the result of the force of rapidly decompressing gases. There was no source of ignition. Then there was Indianapolis, Indiana on January 27th, 2015. A CNG powered trash truck explodes in a fire uh, where the pressure relief devices failed to activate. And large heavy shrapnel was found 1,200 feet away. Uh, then there was a June 23rd, 2015 in Buffalo, New York. A CNG powered tractor was hit by a train and uh, several of the tanks exploded and critically injured the driver and a train conductor. Then there was May 31st, 2016, Nashville, Tennessee. A CNG tractor explodes during filling. The driver was thrown yards away. There was no source of ignition. And um, this just happened December 21, 2018 in Button Willow, California, uh, Kern County. And a CNG tractor also exploded while it was being filled. This damage was caused simply by the force of the rapidly decompressing gases from the ruptured tank. There was no source of ignition. The driver suffered massive blunt force trauma and the driver's side saddle tank was jettisoned up into the air and sailed across four lanes of interstate to land in the parking lot of a Denny's 560 feet away. And XNG isn't the only company that is giving out false information about the alleged non-explosivity of these trailers. Uh, we also have uh, Jay Parent, who is NG Advantage's Senior Director of Operations and Safety. And he told the Planning Commission for the City of Rye, New York, on October 30th, 2017, in a letter, among other false statements, he says, the trailer cylinders do not explode. So it's, it's all the companies that are using these trailers are giving out this same false information. So if you get on the MassDP website, here's one thing interesting that you're going to find. So the question is, is, is Express Natural Gas a registered natural gas supplier in this Commonwealth, in Massachusetts? The answer is no, they are not. They have an application to be a provider to industrial customers? 
nothing about residential and it is in the pending list let's just look it up really quick go to the mass dpu website gas suppliers we put in an x yep here it is we can see here it is still pending uh industrial pending pending list so it's still pending okay so remember the question the question is what if xng was responsible why wouldn't columbia gas be saying they did it well the answer is xng cannot legally provide pressure boosters to local distribution companies in massachusetts it's illegal because they don't have operating authority to do so so if this happened at all there would have had to have been a cover-up because it's illegal so there would be a very good reason so here's what i'm thinking i'm thinking that the local guy steve bryant uh didn't even communicate upwards to his managers at nysource i mean they might know by now but i don't think they originally knew this was just a handshake deal and then when it all went wrong they tried to cover it up so here are here are the players xng the president is john nahill president and founder Here's Seth Berry, the chief, chief administrative officer, and Matt Smith, the executive vice president of sales. And here's Doug Hansen, the chief technology officer. And over here we have Nysource, the parent company for Columbia Gas. Here's the big boss, Nysource, Joe Hamrock, and Steve Bryant is the local president. So what's the connection? So, how you boys doing on your operating authority? Hi, neighbor. I'd be happy to answer that question. Yes, uh, everything's uh, everything's a okay, and uh, we uh, we did file our application, and we're expecting it to come back any day now. Any beautiful morning. Also, uh, well, oh, uh, you don't actually have your operating authority right now. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, hearing is that is that what I, am I getting you? Did I get you right? Listen, if we can close this thing, I can get you a special rate. Twelve dollars a thousand. We're gonna bring in all the equipment, set it all up. You'll never lose pressure during the maintenance. Oh well, uh, it's uh, yep, yeah, that uh, that's that all sounds uh, sounds attractive. Uh, sure, but uh, sure, but uh, I, I'm a little. Uh, I guess we just uh, uh, we we keep mum. We keep it on the QT for the uh, operating authority. The QT. Yes, that would be the neighborly thing to do. Uh, what we need now is we need somebody with subpoena power, some official investigator, whether it's the Massachusetts Attorney General or whether it's uh, Senators Markey and Senators Warren, who have shown out outstanding leadership in the investigation of this event, or whether it's the National Transportation Safety Board, or whether it's the Massachusetts Department of Public Utilities. Any of those agencies, uh, some official with some investigatory powers should, I think, call up these guys call up joe hamrock steve bryant i would start with, with these guys right here in the orange or the or the peach peach background mainly these three guys but also doug hansen they should be called in and asked to testify and just ask them simple questions i'm just going to ask you some simple questions here okay what's what is the business relationship between Express Natural Gas and Columbia Gas of Massachusetts, if any. Has XNG ever deployed pressure boosters to any local distribution system? And what about in Massachusetts? Has Columbia Gas ever used compressed natural gas trailers anywhere in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? And does Columbia Gas's emergency response plan include provisioning CNG trailers during an outage similar to national grids? I'm not kidding, friends. You think I'm making this stuff up? Okay, so I'm going to show you something kind of interesting now. And uh, let me call it up. And I will show you what I'm looking at. 
Um, this is a filing made by National Grid to the New York State Public Service Commission, in this case, June 6, 2014. Remember the date, 2014. Um, all of these companies really got going in 2013, uh, XNG and NG Advantage. So what it is, is it's a gas emergency plan. It's National Grid's emergency plan for all of their, let me show it to you. It says, um, this document applies to all National Grid gas organization regions. So this isn't just for New York. This is for all of National, National Grid, okay? All right, and so look up at the top here. It's 242 pages. Yikes, that's a big document, 242. So let me take you right to, uh, let's cut right to the, uh, to the chase scene here. Okay, so what we are in is, um, once again, all national grid regions. This is the incident commander checklist. So if there's an incident, it's just a procedure that the incident commander is supposed to follow. So if you read down, periodically contact the operations section chief, blah, 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 right? So here's the interesting one, okay? Number 12, when determined necessary, ensure the prompt deployment of CNG trailers to restore critical facilities affected by the gas outage. Did you hear that? <laughs> Let's read that again. It's number 12. This is the incident commander checklist. This is part of National Grid's emergency response plan that they filed with the state of New York. And number 12 is, when determined necessary, ensure the prompt deployment of CNG trailers to restore critical facilities affected by the gas outage. So that's interesting to me because as we can see, it's right, it's part of their emergency response plan, National Grid. So keep in mind, prior to 2012, these trailers did not exist. They didn't receive the USDOT special permit until 2012. And they weren't really commercially available until 2013. Yet by 2014, the local distribution companies are beginning to build in this untested new equipment into their emergency response plans. With no study of the risk. And it's actually in here twice. Look at this one. This is the um, operations branch director. This is uh, a different part of the document. And uh, here's what it says. Again, uh, 5.6, when determined ne necessary, ensure the prompt deployment of CNG trailers to restore critical facilities affected by the gas outage. So... <laughs> What makes this noteworthy? Well, in my mind, the these CNG trailers are an extreme hazard. So the fact that National Grid considers bringing these things in, it's like, <laughs> it's like there's a fire. What do we do? Let's bring in some bombs. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's the wrong thing to do. I just find it's very interesting that National Grid has built in to their emergency response plan the use of these untested, unregulated, experimental, high-pressure, type 4 CNG, carbon fiber composite virtual pipeline tube trailers, which are clearly extreme consequence vehicles, which are being connected to natural gas local distribution systems and without thorough review of the risk. It's in their response plan, their emergency response plan that they filed with the state. This is a prescription for disaster. So I wonder if something um, like that has been filed with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I haven't been able to find it. 
Okay, let's just really quick recap the case for XNG as prime suspects. Once again, the physical proximity of XNG, the corporate headquarters is right there. It's their line of business. And um, in XNG's corporate character, um, there have been many violations, um, which I'm not going to iterate all of them, but XNG has, uh, has had many violations in Susquehanna County, Pennsylvania, violations in New York with their, uh, 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 they failed to obtain uh, air quality permits from the New York State Department of Environmental Conservation. Anyway, all of these are listed in the document. I'm not going to go over them right now, but XNG is a very shady company, and I've seen a lot of shady companies in my investigation of the oil and gas industry over the last 10 years or so. Another thing that is indicating, because this was, if anything, it was, a, it was a technical mistake. It was a goof up. They either somebody turned the wrong valves and put something into bypass or the heater failed. There was some technical mistake that caused uh, either high pressure gas or pressure regulated gas, but super cold gas. This is my theory that entered that uh, distribution main. And then that's how it spread over such a very large area. So as the cryogenically cold gas filled the distribution main, it began to cross the 14 regulators onto the low pressure side. The expansion of gas was happening all over simultaneously as the gas warmed. I believe that this was the cause of the Merrimack Valley overpressurization event. I believe this may be the only way to explain the Merrimack Valley overpressurization event. Now, the point I'm trying to make is this. I think we all can agree that the Merrimack Valley incident was caused by, in part, human error. It was a technical goof up. So what would you say if I could show you a particular company that had a history of technical goof ups that were really endangering public safety? And it's a company that's connected to this thing. They are literally at the scene of the crime. And there's a lot of detail here. I'm going to invite you to read the report. I'm just going to really gloss over them. I believe that the uh, the worst technical error is that their vehicles are overweight. Their standard tractor that they use, the 2017 Freightliner Cascadia with the Cummins Westport natural gas engine, the tractor is only rated for 53,300 pounds. For a gross vehicular weight rating is 53,300 pounds. And it's right here. This is actually a photograph of the sticker inside of one of these uh, XNG's tractors. This was leaked. I can't say where this came from. And also, this is, um, you know, I've investigated a lot of these uh, rollover crashes. And one of the rollover crashes was from Exeter. Uh, Exeter, New York, in Otsego County. There's a rollover crash that happened on uh, July 11th, 2018. And notice, I want you to look at something here. Notice, they list the VINs. Here's the VIN numbers. Here's the trailer, and here is the tractor. It's a Freightliner 2017. Here's the license plate number, PA. Here's the trailer. And here's the gro here is the GVWR, 53,300 pounds. So we can see it here also. 53,300 pounds is the weight rating of the tractor and according to my calculations so here's a little spreadsheet that i've made based on published data by the manufacturers of these trailers now there is some ambiguity in these numbers for instance sometimes the trailer tear weight it may or may not include the weight of the chassis these are really the best numbers that i've been able to come up with with that in mind um, here are the numbers for the Hexagon Titan IV, and here are the numbers for the Quantum VP Light 51. And that particular trailer is called by several different names. And there are two very divergent set of numbers for this particular trailer uh, that are almost 15,000 pounds difference. 
So I'm not sure which one is right. So I'm just going to quote to you a range. So the first thing is anything over 80,000 pounds on this estimated combo curb weight section is a big problem because 80,000 pounds is generally the, in most states and on federal highways, the uh, maximum that a combo can be without obtaining a special use permit. Now the next thing we see is that the lightest weight combo listed in this chart here is the unloaded Titan IV. We say unloaded because it still has around a thousand pounds of residual gas in the tanks. We don't say empty because these trailers can never be empty without going through an expensive requalification procedure. So the next thing we see is that even the Titan IV unloaded, which is the lightest weight combo on this chart, exceeds the manufacturer's gross vehicular weight rating by about 7,500 pounds. And notice that the heaviest combo listed on this chart, the loaded Quantum VP Light 51, is estimated to be between about 89,000 pounds and 106,000 pounds. So this is way over. This is not only way over the 80,000 pound limit for over the road without a special permit, but this is also way over the rated limit of the tractor of 53,300 pounds. This is potentially, depending on which set of numbers is correct here, from the manufacturer, this potentially exceeds the gross vehicular weight rating of the tractor by 2x, 200%. This is an extreme misconfiguration. Let me say that again. The tractor is rated for 53,300 pounds. But the combo is really weighs 90 to 100,000 pounds. So this, the combo is between 30 to 50,000 pounds overweight. That's a lot. And I believe that is contributing to the uh, number of these um, rollover crashes that are happening. So these misconfigurations are extremely dangerous and pose a public health and public safety um, risk, unnecessary risk, and an unsafe work environment for their drivers. So once again, I have found no evidence that there's been any kind of risk assessment uh, or any testing that have been done on these trailers. One thing is for sure, these virtual pipeline tube trailers have not been tested under real-world conditions. They haven't been tested with real-world loads, they haven't been tested with real-world configurations, and they haven't been tested with real-world potential forces. Or if they have done such testing, they've buried the results, they've made it so the public can't see them or uh, any kind of risk assessment of the of the potential harms uh, for connecting these trailers directly up to local distribution systems. I, I can't see where that, that's ever been studied by any engineers. Now, here's one other thing that I hope the NTSB looks at, and, and, and it's, it's a simple question. During this incident, uh, in some surrounding communities, there was a national grid lockout. It was a labor dispute between um, national grid, the managers, and the unionized workers. So they actually locked the doors to prevent the unionized workers from coming to work. So I just hope uh, that that to me seems like a significant detail. And I hope the NTSB is looking at the connection, the possible connection, if any, that that national grid lockout uh, had on this overpressure situation in Merrimack Valley.